Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at a GoFar, I think it's a 2019 model, so it's a 7.5. Um, we're going to be doing a an engine oil service. Uh, we're going to be using Miller's Nano Drive on this, uh, so we're going for a, a bit of an uprated service on this. Um, we're also going to be doing a gearbox service. So this is a Mark 7.5. This is fitted with a DQ381 box. It's slightly different than the Mark 7 because that's fitted with a DQ250. The difference between the two of them is the DQ250 is a six-speed and the DQ381 is a seven-speed. Um, we always are ordering from dealer with all parts that we're getting that's what's meant to go in these boxes make sure you put that back in um, we renew a, a few different parts when we, when we do these just to make sure we, we you know we do we're giving the right service so the service interval on these ones are slightly different i think um v, vw have it down as around about eighty thousand. our advice would be roughly maybe between 40 and 50 you you should look at service in these so when we do these ones, what we will renew um, is we're going to renew the actual filter itself. We're going to renew the filter, uh, the housing O-ring, make sure that it, it slips back in and we've got no seepage. Um, we're going to change both of the fill flux for what it costs from the dealer to get these. Keeps a little bit of peace of mind. They both come with new crush washers so you can put them back in and you know that neither of them are going to leak. Remember, this is a, a very important part of the vehicle. It's important to keep it serviced and well maintained. As I say, we roughly say around about 40k, 50k on these, um, and then again afterwards. As I say, if you're gonna have somebody in there looking around, then they may as well change all of the parts that are involved with this, rather than going in there and just changing the oil. Um, I'm gonna walk through, we're gonna have a look at the vehicle itself. Uh, I think Hayden's done a couple of shots of it earlier on today. going to say hello to Rice, our, our lovely assistant again, see whether he's still quacking. Um, in fact, should we open the door and see who he's behind yeah, it? Yeah, you got to you got to apologise for the wind though, um, Jay. I apologise for the wind. Yeah. We it's your fault. In, yeah, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rice! Quack! Quack! Where is he? Find him. He's hiding. Is he in the office? He's not in the office. What? Where are oh, you? He's there. He's there. Hi, there Rice. He is. Hi, Rice. Right. So, Rice is my glamorous assistant again today, um, but he's actually going to be doing all the work. <laughs> so, we're going to have a look at the car itself. This, like I say, this is a 2019 model. Um, this is fitted, I think, with a GPF exhaust. So, there's a little less space. Um, so, on these, the actual filter housing isn't like on the DQ250. On the DQ250 it's underneath the battery. This one seems to be slightly different. So you've got this whole big exhaust system which is actually in the way and then up very delved in between behind there. You can actually see the filter housing there. So you can see that's going to be quite difficult to get to. Um, I think we're going to use a, a, a universal joint and a, a couple of bars to to kind of get the 24 mil socket on there but it isn't going to be easy it's a little bit fiddly it's very messy um, maybe prepare the, the car for you know for where you can see that the oil is going to actually leak when you take that out um, it's going to be a bit of a pain um, the first things really that we've got that we're going to be looking at is we're going to take off the front under tray here um, because that's actually guarding the mechatronics check plug in there so we're gonna to have to remove this so we've got access to that because both of them plugs are gonna to have to be taken off uh, I think Aiden's taken a, a nice shot of the actual fill plug um, which is there and um, we're gonna take that off um, and obviously when you take this off there is actually a, a fill tube that's inside which we're gonna explain once you take that out that's when the oil will release when that's in, because it's a fill tube and it points upwards, it will only 
release what's over the top of it, which means that it's too full. Um, but we'll explain that as we go along with, with the service so that you, you guys will understand at home what I'm saying there. Um, there are a couple of other things that are underneath this car that look like they've got something to do with the gearbox. What I would advise is what we've shown you is the only thing that you're going to touch on this. So you've got the two plugs there, the mechatronics one, the fill plug here at the bottom and the drain, and then you've got the actual filter um, housing in behind there. That's what you're going to be using to, to kind of, um, well, that's what you're going to be moving to service this. Anything that's over in this unit or to this side of the, the engine, you're not going to be touching. Um, so, we may as well get started. Um, if you want to get this on, under tray off, Reese, and we, we, we can get the job on the, on the road. In order to do this job, you're going to need, obviously, certain tools. You're going to need an up filling um, oil filler so that you can get the oil back in, uh, for one. Uh, for two, you're going to need a scan tool of some sort. We use VCDS um, just so that we can check the gearbox temperature. The oil has to reach the right temperature um, in order for it to, to reach the right level. Essentially, when it's hotter, it's at a different consistency. Um, it, we can use that as a word. Are we happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, no problems. Yeah, um, yeah. Other than that, you're going to need a selection of tools. Uh, Aidan, if you turn to the side and slide back, you'll be able to see the tools that we've got out. So we've got a 14 mil hex. This is going to be for the drain. It's going to go in here um, and the fill plug, obviously. We have a. It says it is a six. Is it? I think it's a six. Yeah, we have a six mil hex. This one we're going to put in here. We've used it on a quarter because if you use a bigger one, it seems to you're going to have problems with this. Um, and these two both need to be taken off. So this one is the check part for the, the mechatronics unit. Um, and this is for the main box itself. But both of these need to, to come out and we will be putting them back in at the correct newton meters when we've, when we've completed the job. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna let Reese undo it and I'm gonna let him take it, take the oil out. We're gonna put it into, into here so we can just roughly have an indicator as to how much has actually come out on these I think VW say it's 6.3 litres that is meant to be put back in. Um, it works in an overflow unit anyway, so if you put too much in, you'll know that you've put too much in because it will come back out um, in order for it to, to obviously reach its correct level afterwards. So I'm going to let Reese undo everything and, and, and get the oil out. So when Reese undoes this, this plug, you should get around about 200, 250 mil maybe drop. Um, the reason for this is it, it doesn't matter that that area there that fill plug will always contain some oil and essentially that's what is dropping out there so there's nothing to worry about it's not saying that the gearbox was massively over overflowing or, or anything like that if, if you've got oil coming out straight away we are going to take the bottom one off first this is the lower level and um, the reason being is we want to you know the oil to kind of drain further down in a moment and then that will allow us to then undo this one because if you undo them at the same time you're going to find that this is just going to literally well it's just going to piddle oil that way it's going to piss out isn't it's it? going to piss oil let's let's just be real okay so it will piss oil now i think i'm going to let aiden have a look in this when this is kind of fully kind of drained within here is an eight mil hex um that we're going to need to insert because the tube is in there and um, like i was talking to you about it should roughly be finger tight. Um, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be too too difficult to get in or out. When you put it back in, again, you know, you need to take a bit of care with this because they do crack. They are quite fragile and they will break. So let's get this ready because this is gonna release a lot on this oil. I'm trying to keep this job as clean as we can. So we're going to release the oil from the mechatronics unit now, he says, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a knuckle delete we're in top. It is. <laughs> um, we've put a bit of blue roll just at the back because the oil does have a habit sometimes of being quite projectile. Um, once you've opened this, this part and took this plug out and it will sit on there and don't really want oil everywhere. I 
I wish I hadn't shot this first quick fire. Yeah, you've got to keep apologising to audience. Wow. There we go. <laughs> why, why, why are you following me around? <laughs> it's no, funny. I don't, really like it. I don't know where all the tools are because Jesus has it. Nice, what are you doing? No idea. So, as we've reached quite an obstacle with the <laughs> all the extra pieces to this exhaust that are not required, thank you very much, emissions laws, um, we are going to try and access the filter and the filter housing from up top. So, we're going to put that up and uh, we're going to put the car down and we're going to have a little look. So I have miraculously grown. I've stood on my step. Um, we decided not to go and try and get it out from underneath. Um, you can take the air pipe, the air box off, but I don't. You know, we 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 could probably get in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a whirl anyway and see if we can get it off. Twenty four mil socket and a half. Be careful of the electric pipe that's underneath here as well. But I think that. I can get it off with my hand now. I'm going to try and make as little mess as I possibly can. Um, <laughs> this is a messy one. It's, there's no real easy way of doing this without spilling a bit. We've tried to negate some of the spillage by putting a cloth underneath there, but the, it will need to be cleaned up afterwards. Um, you've also got to be careful with the actual filter itself. Um, I'll just get this one out so you can have a look at it. Uh, but they do have a, a plastic cap end um, and these can become dislodged and come off um, because it's not made of the greatest material and they can um, stay in the actual housing area. So make sure when you take it out that it comes out as a complete unit. We're going to do that now. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess and I'm going to smell like cat piss again. I don't want to do this job. Go. Let's get underneath it and this should come out in a minute. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Oh. Yeah, and the filter stayed in there, so you can hear it pissing. You can hear some dripping, unfortunately, like I say, I'm trying to do it. So right. I've still retained some. In there, sorry I moved so quick then. I just didn't what well, you can hear it dripping underneath the car, it's not the nicest noise. But you know that's making a mess. But there's not really a great deal that you can do about it. I'm gonna grab the filter now pull that out so we can have less. There we go. Yeah, cat piss. Let's put it there. Can someone get me some blue roll please? <laughs> Go away, Aiden. You know I hate favorite. this. It's disgusting. Um, Haldex fluid and uh, DFG automatic trans fluid, transmission fluid that absolutely stinks. It's, it's a disgusting smell. It's not nice. So we've got that out. You can probably see that we've made a little bit of a mess. I'm going to let you look in there again, Aiden. If you want to pass me that torch, I will um, show Aiden the mess that we've made. Show the viewers, not me, I'm not watching it. Well, I'm going to show the viewers. So you can see that there's some um, of the oil that's just on the top of the metal housing there for the for the actual gearbox. So I'm going to make sure that I get that all nice and dried off because that will get hot in and around there. So we don't want this car smelling. Anyway, let's get this cleaned up. Here's detail in the detailer's car. I'm detail. Oh, oh. Shout out to um, the, the owner of this car, um, is it Pavs? Pav. Yeah, oh, Pav. Pavs Detailing, um, up here in Cross Gates in Leeds, um, that's who, whose car we're looking after, we look after a couple of his vehicles, um, but yeah, big shout out to him, thank you very much. Yeah, so actually that was a lot easier to get from up top, I think, than trying to get from the underneath. I'm going to pop that. And how do you know when it's in, Jess? Because uh, it makes a popping. On. There we go. So 
So there's not much on the internet about this service. Um, I found the odd details, mainly in Polish and other languages. So I've had to try and we've had to try and figure it out based on what we already know about servicing these boxes ourselves. Um, not too hard on this. Remember when I took it off? It wasn't on that hard, but we don't actually have a specific torque setting for this one. So. Jace, you need to not talk to the battery. No, I'm not trying. I'm trying to get back on. Yeah, battery don't give a shit. Yeah. The battery's just there. He's not even listening. Shut up. Done. Right, so we're happy enough with that now. So, we're done up top. We can drop this back down, and then we can start the filling process. What's your middle name, Rice? Alan! Alan! Steve! Alan! Steve. What is it, Alan? Steve! 10 Newton metres and a 45 degree turn. Uh, he, he loves his tarp rings, doesn't he? Donk. There you go. Mm. Nice. And you're just swapping over what to do you? 45 degree turn? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So we're now going to start filling the DSG oil. Uh, this is the oil that we're using for anyone at home that wants to have a look what part number it is. It's a really satisfying noise, isn't it? It's really, it's like it's really enjoying a pint. was mo the most satisfying thing seeing Reese's driving license and seeing that he's actually called Alan. So now that we've, uh, we've filled around about six and a half litres in, we've slightly overfilled it because it works on an overflow mechanism. So once gearbox um, temperature gets to 35 to 38, um, the consistency of the oil will drop and whatever remains in after it gets to that temperature is the right level so then you know that whatever comes out is just the overflow so once we know that the box is full of the dsg oil we need to circulate that oil around the channels so what we're going to do next is we're going to jump in the car we're going to get it started we're going to change the gears so we're going to spend about maybe between four and five seconds in each gear, just to make sure that it fully opens up, allows the oil to kind of circulate and pass. And we're gonna do that in each of the gears. We're gonna allow the temperature to get up to 35 so that we know that the consistency is right. And then we're gonna come back down to here and we're gonna see how much actually overflows. We're gonna tell you when you need to close the fill plug. So now that we've filled her up, Top. what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to VCDS and check the automatic Box. So what we're doing now is we're just going to go into automatic transmission. We're going to go into measuring values. Yep. Yes. And then I mean you can see it's there. So fluid temperature is just there, ATF. So we go into there. Currently we're at 22. Now this does take quite a while. Thank you for being pointing in my face, Aiden. You didn't realise was there. All right. um, yeah, this does take quite a while. Um, I actually cheated a little bit. This car's been started for probably five, ten minutes, um, and we're still at 23. So you have to wait for this to get to 35 until you can start releasing the overflow of the oil back out and um, and finish the job. So. We're going to wait. Now that the gearbox temperature is at 35 degrees, we know that it's safe to release the excess oil that is, uh, is flowing in the gearbox out. So we we'll use this to fill, but we can also use it to drain. So what we're going to do is we're going to, be, we're going to open this valve up now. We're going to let some of this oil out and we'll see what we've got left. So as the gearbox moves, it's, it's going to rotate some of the oil, it's going to kind of make, well, waves kind of in it. So it will keep kind of just driving it over. Once this gets to a steady flow, we know that it's time to one close the valve and take this out. And you'll be able to see again from the top, because we're going to take the, the actual fill plug out, 
and we're going to see it come to a steady flow and then we can put the, 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 the fill plug back in. Going in, in from the dribble drag, so there we go. So I'd say that is around about enough. We'll get that locked up. Out that. I smell a cat piss again. That's the service done in this DQ381. We hope that has been helpful for you guys out there. Um, and we're done. Thank you very much for watching.